Unless you spent big bucks on your motorcycle, then it probably came with a basic damper rod fork that's going to leave a lot to be desired in terms of comfort and performance. Thankfully, there's an effective upgrade for damper rod forks that you can do yourself for just about 250 bucks. They're called gold valve emulators, and I'll show you how to install them in this episode of the Shop Manual. This episode is powered by DuraBoost batteries. Get 10% off your DuraBoost purchase at revzilla.com with discount code TSMBOOST10. This is a damper rod, and it's what provides damping in the vast majority of motorcycle forks, including almost all vintage bikes, most Harleys, and many, many mid-level street bikes and dual sports. Damper rods rely on holes to restrict oil flow and create damping force, and therein lies the problem. Orifice style damping, as it's called, is a static technology and it's inherently flawed because it's both mushy and soft on the brakes and while cornering, but also too harsh over sharp edged bumps. They're sort of the worst of both worlds, and yet so many bikes have them because they're cheap to manufacture. Gold valve emulators fix the problem inherent in damper rods. They have a spring loaded valve so they can actually respond to suspension stroke velocity and behave like a well tuned cartridge fork for better traction, comfort, and control. And on the topic of cartridges, these things are a lot more affordable. To install gold valve emulators, you will need to remove and partially disassemble your fork tubes. And the fork caps are best cracked free while they're still clamped in the triple clamp. So go ahead and loosen those now, but do not remove them. Now, if you've got aluminum caps like I do on this bike, they do mar easily. So you can help preserve them by putting a paper towel over the cap before you put your socket on it. And if you've got a six point socket instead of a 12 point socket, that'll give you more surface area and help preserve the aluminum. Next, remove the front wheel and brake caliper, loosen the upper and lower triple clamp bolts, pull off the fork tubes and clamp one up so you can access the damp rod bolt at the bottom of the tube. I'm using a Motion Pro pivot vise to hold the fork because life is short and I like nice stuff, but I've also done plenty of work at a standard bench vise. You just wanna make sure you're using soft jaws or cardboard or something to keep from scratching the fork tube. In my experience, removing the damper rod bolt can be the most frustrating part of this whole project. And that's because sometimes it will turn, but not loosen. And that's because the damper rod it's threaded into is spinning inside the fork leg. Like I said, damper rods kinda suck. Now, if you've got a pneumatic impact gun, the bolt doesn't stand a chance. But if you don't have one of these and you are struggling, your best bet is to heat the bolt head with a propane torch in order to loosen the thread lock that's on there and or give it a couple of swift whacks with a drift and a hammer in order to jar those threads free. We've got the damper rod bolt cracked loose. We've got the fork cap cracked loose. We are now ready to take this fork apart. But before we do that, we wanna prep our work surface by laying down some pig mat or paper towel or newspaper or old towel, whatever you've got to help absorb some oil because it's bound to get messy. Now, you can take the fork cap off, being aware that it might have some spring preload on it so it might try and pop. Then fish out the spacer, any washers and the fork spring and lay all the components out in the order that they were removed. Now drain the fork oil into a suitable container and stroke the fork a couple times to help dispel all of the old oil. Now that the oil is out, we can finally take that damper rod bolt all the way out. And if it just spins, which it might do, then you're gonna need to put the spring and the spacer and the cap back on in order to put some pressure on that damper rod so that it doesn't rotate. Am I gonna get lucky? I am. Once you've got the bolt and washer out, the damper rod and top out spring should just fall out of the fork. And this is as far as you have to disassemble the fork. Now we are 95% of the way to replacing your fork seals and bushings. So if your bike is due for that sort of thing, now would be a great time. This fork is brand new, so I'm gonna leave those parts in place. The gold valve is going to sit on top of the damper rod. And since it takes over compression damping duties, we need to disable the compression damping holes in the damper rod by drilling them out. 
We do that by enlarging them with a quarter inch drill and then adding more holes so that there is no restriction through the damper rod itself. The holes need to be drilled at 10 millimeter increments and perpendicular to the other sets, so we have a total of six holes. Ideally, you would chamfer and deburr the holes, either with dedicated tools or a small file or sandpaper, and then it's really important that you clean out all of the swarth and grit. Maximus Suspension Clean is ideal for the job, but you could also use carb cleaner or isopropyl alcohol. The emulators come as a kit with extra preload springs and valve plates, and they need to be set up. But the good news is when you buy them, you get an access code to Racetech's valving website. So you're gonna put in your bike, your riding style, your weight, and it's gonna spit out totally custom specs, not only for the settings on the emulator, but also recommended spring rate, oil height, and oil weight. So super helpful. And once you get all of this set up on the emulator, you're just gonna put them on top of the damper rod. Make sure your top out spring is over the damper rod as well. And then we can start reassembling everything. You slide that in. Push the fork all the way down. We wanna make sure everything lines up. Take your damper rod bolt and clean the threads. Put your new sealing washer on and put a dab of blue Loctite on the threads to help keep it in place. Then. Just thread it in a couple threads by hand. In order to torque that bolt, we are going to need to put the fork spring back in, the fork spring spacer back in, and the fork cap on in order to put some pressure on that damper rod to keep it from rotating. And the torque in that bolt is typically 12 or 14 foot pounds, but obviously you're gonna wanna check your workshop manual for your motorcycle to confirm that. Damper rod bolt is torqued. Go ahead and take the fork cap off again and pull the spacer out because we're gonna need to shorten this. That's because when you add the gold valve emulators, you're adding distance below the spring. So if you were to just screw the cap back on, you would end up with too much installed preload. Now, I am also going to be using Racetech springs, which are shorter than stock. So I'm going to make all new preload spacers from the aluminum tube that was included with the kit. To figure out how long your preload spacer needs to be, fully extend the fork and then measure from the top of the spring to the top of the fork tube. And then also measure the fork cap from the shoulder to the bottom of the threads and subtract this number from that number. So I've got 12 here and 200 there, that's 188. So if I made a spacer that was 188 millimeters long, I would have zero installed preload. The spec for this particular project is four millimeters, so taking into account these steel washers that need to go above and below the aluminum spacer, which are three millimeters. I need to cut the spacer to 189 millimeters to give us the desired four millimeters of installed preload. This spacer tube is aluminum, but PVC is also common, and there's a lot of ways to cut it. You could use a chop saw, whether it's aluminum or PVC, or you could use a tubing cutter on this. I'm actually gonna be using a hacksaw, which frankly is the most inaccurate way to do it. And since it's very important that the ends of the spacer be square, what I'm gonna do is use masking tape to give myself a guideline, and then I'm gonna cut very slowly to make sure I stay on that line. Once you've made your cut, square up the end of the file, deburr with sandpaper, and then clean with a solvent of your choice. Moving right along, it is time to add our fork oil. Take everything out, that is the spring and the emulator, and then fully compress the fork and pour in enough oil to bring it to, oh, three or four inches from the top. Then stroke the fork a few times to bleed the air out. Now gently drop the emulator into the fork, and with the fork still fully compressed and held vertical, go ahead and check your oil height with a tape measure. So I'm gonna dip it into the oil a little bit, put my finger at 65 and pull it out. So the oil line is at 
25, so 65 minus 25 is 40. So that gives us our oil height. Oil height is important because it determines the volume of air inside the fork. And that air gets squeezed as the fork compresses and adds a progressive spring rate that can be useful in tuning suspension behavior toward the bottom of the stroke. To set the fork oil height, you can either pour some oil in or pour some oil out, which is probably gonna be kind of messy, or you can use a dedicated fork oil height tool. It's got a syringe with a graduated rod and a stop, so you can set it to the height you want, drop it into the fork, and draw off the excess oil. With that done, fully extend the fork and then drop in your fork spring. Washer number one, your spacer, and washer number two. Then go ahead and set the cap on and check your preload. We're aiming for about four millimeters which is what we've got here. If it was sitting way tall, that would be a strong indicator that the gold valve emulator is not seated properly in the damper rod. We're all good though, so I'm going to use my paper towel and my socket and snug this guy down. Follow the same procedure for the other fork leg, then install both tubes back in the bike, torque everything to spec, pump your front brake, and you're done. Your fork is now equipped to provide much more controlled and refined damping. And if you're not completely happy with the way the fork performs, you can tune it. That's the beauty of the gold valve emulators. You change compression damping by altering the spring preload on the unit, and you can change rebound damping with fork oil weight. True, you have to extract the emulator or swap the oil to make those changes, but at least it's an option now. And for $250 and a day's worth of effort, you're gonna get a big improvement in suspension comfort and performance. Thanks for watching this episode of the Shot Manual. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. And I gotta say, I enjoy it. It's a huge privilege to be able to teach people about motorcycles so they can understand them and work on them better. So if you like what we do here, you like the information we bring and the questions we answer, just know that the Shop Manual is produced with funds when people like you make a purchase at Revzilla. So if you wanna support the Shop Manual, support Revzilla. And if you want more motorcycle content, you want written reviews and news, cruise on over to Common Tread where we are constantly publishing new content.